Okay, grade 11. I've made a PowerPoint specifically for module 7, and I'm going to cover the most important formulas or indicators and analysis that you would need for partnerships. So let's start with indicator 6. It's on the return on the average owner's equity. This one you've been doing since grade 10, so it should be familiar to you. It's about how profitable the investment is, and you're probably going to compare it with if you were to invest money into a bank um, deposit, like a fixed deposit, or an investment to buying shares, something like that. Is it viable? Are you making more money with your money sitting in the business? To remind you, you take your net profit, that's right at the bottom of your income statement, and take your average owner's equity, meaning what you started with at the beginning of the year, March the 1st, and now the amount that you've got at the end, 28 of February, divided by 2, and that is your percentage that you can then compare with any other investments. Indicator 12, I'm jumping a bit, going to the next one. This is about the current ratio, which we also covered in grade 10. You will be familiar with this one. Basically referring to the word liquidity, as in how liquid, it, how liquid is your business, meaning cash flow. And if your cash are um, freed up, and if you can use it to buy more assets. So what you'll do is you'll take your current assets, and you'll compare it with your current liabilities. Those, Both these amounts will be available in your balance sheet with their own headings. Then we're going to one, also familiar, acid test ratio. Remember, it's like testing gold if it's really gold. So, for example, in this coronavirus situation, COVID-19, this would be something that could be very relevant to use, probably before it started or as soon as it started. Because it will tell your business if they can settle their debts in abnormal conditions, meaning assuming eliminating your inventories, take all your stock and say, I won't be able to sell it on lockdown, but I still have my debtors and my bank or cash and cash equivalents active. So can I use those two things to pay all my current liabilities? So you basically take your answer from the previous formula, current A, and you take out the inventories. Or, if you go for the second option, you take your trade and other receivables, basically your debtors, plus your cash, and you compare that. And if this formula is healthy and good, then the coronavirus wouldn't have hurt you that much. I'm going to indicate a 14 and 15. You might have touched on this before. Both of them relate to stock. The first one is relating to your rate that the stock is being sold, and the other one is relating to a period. I mean, how long does it stay with you? So let's do number 14 first, the one that refers to your turnover rate. So basically, you're asking the question, how often in 12 months do we turn over, sell our stock? The answer will be in times per year. So let me give you an example. The fashion items will normally be four times a year because there's four seasons in a year. The grocery store, they would like to be selling it 36 times a year more often because they've got some perishables. So the answer is a number of times per year. The formula, basically take your cost of sales, divide it by your average stock. Again, look at your beginning, opening, closing, opening and closing stock, add them and divided by two, and that gives you on average. So this is on the rate, and you can connect it with the word times per year. When we look at the holding period, how long will the period be in the time-wise, they'll say how long it takes businesses on average to sell the stock. Now we're going to look at days, and possibly months, but the most popular formula to use is the one for days. The example here would be fashion takes about 91 days to move and then grocery store only 10 days to move around. So it's a similar answer but just in a different format. So how would you do this one? Interesting, when it comes to the period, you just switch around the formula that we did in 14. Cost of sales is now at the bottom and your average stock is at the top. Do note that there is possibly sometimes that they'll ask you to use your closing stock, meaning they want to know what you're sitting with right now. 
how long it's going to take before you get rid of this but then they'll have to ask for it so you would default always to average stock and then also default to 365 days only if they want it in months you'll put 12 over 1. Number 16 and 17 they also um, explain together and group together for debtors, it's about collection, and for the creditors, it's about how often we pay them. So if we look at the debtors, it's going to be the average days it takes us to pay them, or to receive the cash from them. How often do they pay? Every 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? So again, your answer will be in days. What you'll do is you'll take your debtors, divide it by your credit sales, and times by you want days, so you'll say 365. If you go to the creditors, similar scenario here, you won't know, want to know how long it takes you to pay them. On average, how long does it take us to make a payment? And in answers again, in days. So now you'll take the creditors and you'll put your purchases at the bottom. There is a catch though that sometimes they won't give you the credit purchases and you might have to use cost of sales. Why would I use cost of sales? This would be where a company has the policy that whatever I sell, I replace within the same month. So basically you'll be purchasing whatever you sold. So only use that when the purchases are not available. 365 days, your answer is in days. Then indicator number 18, your debt and equity ratio. This one is basically to see how your business is financed, where are you getting your funds from, your big amounts of money. First of all, you could possibly get it from the owners, and secondly, you could borrow it from a financial institution. So what this formula does is it will tell you if your financial risk is high or low. It is low if most of your equity is coming from your owner, meaning that they are providing the capital. It will be a high risk, financial risk, if you're using mainly borrowed capital, meaning you went to a financial institution and you borrowed money from there. What is the formula? You take the debt equity, I mean the debt on the, debit, on the left side and equity on the right side. As the formula says when you first read it, it's exactly how it's broken down. What is your debt? It's basically your non-current liabilities. That's it. And then your equity on the right will you'll find in your balance sheet as well. Then the answer here. Yeah. The equity is always 1 because we say this divided by that, have that as 1, and whatever your answer is on the left should be less than 1, like 0 0.2 or 0 0.3, then it seems fairly low. But what you will do is you'll always compare it with last year and say it's gone up or it's gone down. And that's it. Now you can do 7.9 and 7.11, up to 7.9.